Oh, shit. <laughs> Born out of the atomic waste dumped into the ocean, emerges to the surface and terrorizes Tokyo, a truly invincible monster with the most iconic signature roar. Of course, we're talking about King of the Monsters, beloved by fans all over the world, the mighty Godzilla himself. Even though he was the one terrorizing Tokyo in his first on-screen appearance in 1954, Godzilla was soon seen fighting against other monsters because of the film's immense success, and got promoted to the protector of humanity. Since then, he has had to fight an array of powerful titans in different sizes and shapes to deserve the well-earned title of King of the Monsters. Pitting Godzilla against other titans has given fans some legendary battles over the years, and also also many other titans to go bonkers over. Some are more powerful than others, and they've always provided Godzilla fans a run for their money. Although Godzilla has always managed to stand at the end of a battle, some of these battles were against much more powerful monsters than him, sometimes as powerful as destroying a whole planet if left rampant. In this marvelous video, we do a deep dive into the top 20 most powerful Godzilla villains who can shatter an entire planet for fun. Let's jump right into it. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Void Ghidorah In this version of Godzilla's iconic arch-nemesis, King Ghidorah is said to be a planet-eater that inhabits the void between dimensions. Appearing in the 2018 anime film Godzilla the Planet Eater, Void Ghidorah is a monstrous entity worshipped by the Exif race for over 100,000 years after he destroyed their native planet of Exifkalis. They found new worlds to convert to their faith and fed that world to their god. Void Ghidorah is depicted as an energy-based being, which provides him the ability to pass through dimensions. His abilities include supergravity, which enables him to consume worlds, and space-time distortion, using which he bends Godzilla's atomic breath. He communicates to the Exif clergy using a technology called Gematron Calculation, and exhibits various electrical properties like lightning bolts and electrified bite, where he can also drain the electromagnetic energy from Godzilla. He is finally defeated by Godzilla after he loses his connection to the Exif Archbishop, Metphees, who enabled Ghidorah to see in this dimension and attack Godzilla. This makes him subject to the laws of this dimension and also to Godzilla Earth's fists. Space Godzilla Yet another clone of Godzilla after Biollante, Space Godzilla is said to have evolved as a result of Godzilla DNA somehow going into a black hole and assimilating crystalline organisms whilst rapidly absorbing energy from dying stars. He lands on Birth Island to attack Little Godzilla and draw out Godzilla himself so he can eliminate his counterpart and ensure dominance on planet Earth. The extraterrestrial crystalline Godzilla clone debuted in the 1994 film Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, the penultimate one in the Heisei series. He has huge white crystals emerging from his two shoulders and sports similar crystals on his dorsal plates. Boasting an array of powers like Corona Beam, Gravity Tornado, and Photon Shield, along with an ability to form and use crystals in various ways, Space Godzilla stands as one of the most intelligent and challenging foes of Godzilla. Godzilla. Upon his first arrival, he defeats Godzilla and imprisons his adopted son in a crystal cage. He makes his way to Fukuoka, where Magira is joined by Godzilla to take down this extraterrestrial titan. Magira drills through the ground and destroys Space Godzilla's power source, and also blasts his shoulder crystals with spiral grenades, giving Godzilla a chance to finish him off once and for all.
King Ghidorah Monsterverse The Monsterverse version of King Ghidorah was the first time the beloved Titan was fully realized in modern computer-generated images. Following the success of 2014 Godzilla, the Joker to Godzilla's Batman, the fan-favorite King Ghidorah was brought to life in great detail with his three heads, wings, and two tails, which captured the silhouette of the classic monster. Given the designation Monster Zero in 2019, Godzilla King of the Monsters, King Ghidorah was the largest specimen uncovered by Monarch, found frozen in the Antarctic permafrost named Outpost 32. He is believed to belong from a rival species of apex predators to Godzilla and is awakened by Alan Jonah's eco-terrorist paramilitary and Emma Russell's Orca as part of their plan to renew the world's ecosphere. After Ghidorah is unleashed onto the world, Monarch learns that he is actually an ancient species feared by many bygone cultures and said to be a dragon who fell from the stars. Godzilla quickly reaches Outpost 32 upon the unleashing of Ghidorah, but is defeated by the Golden Titan after taking his signature gravity beams to his chest. This version of Ghidorah's gravity beams are very powerful, as a direct hit from all three heads dissipates Mothra at once. His other abilities, as seen in the film, include using all his three heads in melee combat and using his versatile wings to deflect attacks and wing walk. His wings are immensely strong, as he has no problem lifting Godzilla's whole body thousands of meters into the air. He withstands two blasts of atomic breath from Godzilla and remains untouched by the oxygen destroyer. He is only defeated after Godzilla fuses with Mothra's ashes, turning into burning Godzilla and incinerating him with a nuclear pulse. Super Mecha Godzilla. Making its return in the Heisei era is another fan favorite, Mecha Godzilla, as the Mecha built to fight against Godzilla, which, when attached with the Garuda, becomes Super Mecha Godzilla, as seen in the 1993 film Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla 2. Unlike its Showa counterpart, the Mecha Godzilla is constructed by the human military organization G Force. The first fighting machine built by them was an aerial warcraft called Garuda, but its firepower was limited. A breakthrough came when UNGCC salvaged the remnants of Mecha King Ghidorah and reverse-engineered its technology into an image of Godzilla called Mecha Godzilla. Mecha Godzilla could match Godzilla in a battle, as it can absorb Godzilla's atomic breath due to its diamond coating and redirect into a plasma grenade back at him. The robot Titan can also shoot speared shock anchor cables into Godzilla's skin and release crippling electrical discharge through them. It attaches with Garuda to form Super Mecha Godzilla, which expands its arsenal and drastically increases its firepower. However, Mecha Godzilla lacks any hand-to-hand -hand combat capabilities, and his diamond coating melts away as Godzilla turns up the heat after absorbing Rodan's energy. Gigan. Another iconic monster from the Showa series is Gigan, the cyborg space dinosaur, who has remained a fan favorite over the years thanks to his unusual design and brutal personality. Since his first appearance in 1972 in Godzilla vs. Gigan, he is always shown to be acting under villainous orders from other alien races. M Space Hunter Nebula in Godzilla vs. Gigan and Godzilla vs. Megalon, the Garogas in Zone Fighter, and the Exilia in Godzilla Final Wars. Gigan has appeared in more than 26 Godzilla video games and many other non-film media like mobile game crossovers and television series. Gigan sports a laser-firing aperture on his forehead, which he's seen using in publicity posters but never on film. However, the laser became a staple of Gigan's arsenal in other media and was finally brought to the screen in Godzilla Final Wars and was called the Scattered Light Beam 
Moonbeam Geigerium Cluster. Apart from Geigen's anti-gravity flight and teleportation abilities, his most commonly used weapons are his hook arms, called hammer hands or hammer claws, which he uses to batter and stab opponents. In Godzilla Final Wars, his hammer hands were redesigned to resemble huge blades, which were dubbed bloody triggers. They also housed dual grappling hooks on the underside of these blades, which he used to bind Godzilla and drag him towards his buzzsaw. Destoroya. When the oxygen destroyer is deployed at the end of the 1954 film Godzilla, it detonates at the bottom of Tokyo Bay, reviving a colony of Precambrian crustaceans. The resulting anaerobic conditions cause the creatures to undergo mutation, where they evolve and grow by combining with each other, appearing in many different forms before becoming the gigantic monstrosity called Destoroya. Debuting in 1995's Godzilla vs. Is Destoroya, the final one in the Heisei series, this merciless kaiju is considered one of the evilest foes of Godzilla, as he is seen to be enjoying the wrath he causes as opposed to just acting out of instincts. He is also the oldest monster in the entire franchise, as the Precambrian crustacean colony was dated to be 2.5 billion years old. Destoroya has six distinct forms, microform, crawl form, juvenile form, agri aggregate form, flying form, and perfect form. Destoroya's signature power remains the ability to divide and combine in all of his forms, eventually becoming one perfect form. When badly injured, Destoroya's perfect form can divide into smaller aggregate forms and recombine after injuries sustained. His primary offensive weapon is his micro-oxygen beam until his juvenile form and turns into the oxygen destroyer ray in his aggregate form and after. Biollante. Biollante was the first opponent to face Godzilla in the Heisei series and was the first plant-based monster in the whole franchise, rather than animal-based or mechanical. Debuting in 1989's Godzilla vs. Biollante, this kaiju is a tribrid organism made from human DNA, rose DNA, and Godzilla cells. Initially, she appears in her rose form as a giant rose with sharp, uneven teeth in the center, standing around 85 meters tall. She attacks Godzilla using her many veins, which have small mouths at the end, but is defeated by the King of the Monsters and breaks up into energy spores and floats away as a form of retreat. In her final form, she takes a more Godzilla-looking shape, with her crocodilian head with a mouthful of teeth, with even more veins this time around. She is defeated after Godzilla fires atomic breath directly into her mouth when she again breaks up into energy spores this time floating away into outer space. She is later discussed in Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla as being a possible cause for Godzilla DNA entering a black hole. Mecha King Ghidorah One of Godzilla's most famous adversaries, King Ghidorah was revived for the Heisei series in 1992's Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah post the success of Godzilla vs. Biollante. This version of King Ghidorah was created by time-traveling terrorists called the Futurians, who left behind three genetically engineered creatures called Dorats in 1944 on Lagos Island so they could be exposed to the H-bomb that would create Godzilla. These creatures evolved to become the monster King Ghidorah, who is unleashed by the Futurians to attack Japan in 1992, when he's confronted by Godzilla. Godzilla. Godzilla severs King Ghidorah's middle head and blasts one of his wings, sending him into the sea and killing him. His corpse was preserved by the cold water and was hence taken back to 2204, where he was rebuilt with 23rd century technology, giving rise to Mecha King Ghidorah. He is seen materializing from a flash of pulsating energy out of thin air reinforced with several robotic segments and piloted by Emi Kano, the turncoat Futurian who built him. Although the center head is fitted with gravity laser cannons that he uses to launch an all-out assault on Godzilla, at first the cybernetics were still vulnerable to Godzilla's atomic breath.
Mechagodzilla, Kiryu. Toho decided to revive Mechagodzilla for the millennium era after the huge successes of 2001's Godzilla, Mothra, and King Ghidorah, giant monsters all out attack. This time around, his body was built using the genes and skeleton of the original 1954 Godzilla, whose remains were revived from Tokyo Bay. With the third distinct iteration of Mechagodzilla, this fighting machine was named Kiryu, which is a compound of two two kanji, meaning machine, and dragon. With a new name, this mecha made two appearances in 2002's Godzilla against Mechagodzilla, and then again in 2003's Godzilla Tokyo SOS, where the name Mechagodzilla was only said twice in the first film and not at all in the second. He's equipped with a back unit that has multi-purpose missile launchers in the front and on the sides. He's also given a master blade that can cut Godzilla's skin and shock him, but his most effective weapon is his absolute zero cannon. Having the original 1954 Godzilla bones as your mainframe meant that Kiryu could be taken over by Godzilla's spirit any time. Sent to fight against the current Godzilla, Kiryu proves to be a worthy opponent, until Godzilla bellows a thunderous roar that shakes the cores of his computers and wakes the original Godzilla within him, which results in Kiryu rampantly destroying Yokohama until he runs out of power. He manages to injure Godzilla's chest with his absolute zero cannon when it blasts underwater, and Godzilla retreats for the time being. Godzilla's spirit takes over Kiryu again in Godzilla Tokyo SOS, when Kiryu is ordered to finish Godzilla, and he breaks free of his control to instead restrain Godzilla and shut himself down while drowning in the Pacific Ocean, so another one of his own kind will not have to die. Hedorah. Appearing in the Showa era's Godzilla vs. Hedorah in 1971, Hedorah is an alien smog monster that arrives on Earth on the Ikea Comet and feeds off of human pollution to grow to a kaiju size. He is shown to act primarily out of instinct and survival, and his main danger to humans is his biological properties rather than any malice. He has five distinct forms denoted as Young Form, Aquatic Stage, Landing Stage, Flying Stage, stage and perfect stage. In his perfect stage, Hedorah can shoot acidic sludge and eye bolts that can be lethal to Godzilla. He also releases sulfuric mist as a byproduct of consuming pollutants, which can corrode any metal and disintegrate organic life forms. He can be destroyed by drying the water in his body, as he's made vastly out of water. His perfect stage collapses into a dried husk when he's electrified, but Hedorah can regenerate into a small form from the tiniest amount of water left in his body. Which is why, after their final battle, the Monster King had to ensure his defeat by digging all the slime out of Hedorah's body and turning it all to dust by dehydrating it. Monster X, Kaiser Ghidorah. Monster X was summoned by the Exilians from Planet X, concealed inside the Gorath meteorite as their final weapon against Godzilla. First appearing in Godzilla Final Wars in 2004, he is the last one of the Millennium series and the most powerful among the Exilians' legion of monsters. He was also Toho's last kaiju to play Godzilla's on-screen foe for a period of 10 years, until Servum in 2017's Godzilla Planet planet of the monsters. Unlike the rest of the monsters mind-controlled by the Exilians, Monster X shows true malice when fighting Godzilla. Even after the Exilians' mothership is destroyed by Godzilla with his atomic breath and the mind control is lifted, Monster X continues to fight viciously and relentlessly. After taking the kickback from engaging in a beam lock with Godzilla, Monster X proceeds to transmogrify into Kaiser Ghidorah. Kaiser Ghidorah is canonically the strongest member of the Ghidorah group, and is often referred to as being the strongest monster in the Godzilla franchise. Kaiser is derived from the German word for Emperor, Kaiser. This new version of Ghidorah was named Kaiser Ghidorah in order to establish his superiority over King Ghidorah. Monster X was a physical match to Godzilla, with his rapid melee attacks and his impressive agility. Kaiser Ghidorah trades this agility for an exorbitant amount of power, with his more powerful 
anti-gravity beams that could lift a 55,000 metric ton Godzilla into the air and toss him through the ruins of Tokyo. Orga. Orga is the first opponent of Godzilla in the Millennium series, appearing at the end of the 1999 film Godzilla 2000 Millennium. When an alien UFO belonging to the Millennians is awakened by a submarine after being dormant for 60 million years, they seek out and absorb Godzilla's G1 from his cells into their collective form in order to attain a stable state. Their biomass is combined into a single physical form and they emerge out of the UFO, mutating into a monster due to the volatile properties of Godzilla DNA, resulting in the formation of Orga. When he is initially confronted by Godzilla, Orga possesses the strength and regenerative powers of the King of the Monsters, which buys him time but is no match to the King himself. Eventually, he closes the distance between him and Godzilla thanks to his instantaneous regeneration and bites him to absorb more DNA, transforming himself into a perfect clone. He gets greedy for more DNA and tries to swallow Godzilla as a whole. Godzilla blasts atomic breath from inside his body as he's being swallowed and blows Orga's upper torso into pieces. Boggin. Making only two appearances, once in 1993's Super Nintendo game Super Godzilla, and again in 1998's PC game Godzilla Movie Studio Tour, Boggin is well known amongst fans for his numerous scrap film projects. Initially planned to appear in 1980, Resurrection of Godzilla, which was ultimately released as The Return of Godzilla, there have been over nine film projects featuring Boggin that got scrapped throughout the 80s and 90s. Boggin was the final boss in his 1993 appearance in the Super Godzilla video game and was the most powerful villain of them all. This version of the character was an ancient Chinese beast supercharged by cells from Godzilla and King Ghidorah, spliced into him by an unnamed race of alien commanders. He is impossible to defeat with normal Godzilla and stands as a difficult opponent even after transforming into Super Godzilla. He is seen as an energy form and transmogrifies into to its final form when approached by Godzilla in the battle. Boggin fires a plasma beam from his mouth and shoots laser beams from his horns. His most vicious attack is called the Slasher Claw, which is described in a story draft to be as powerful as to crumble a monastery just by pointing at it. He also later appeared in the form of a printable sumo wrestling tabletop game as an opponent to Godzilla, where you could make a small cutout of both the monsters and tap the desk to make the Fine. Megagirus. The G-Graspers, JSDF's elite anti-Godzilla unit, finish their ultimate weapon against Godzilla, codenamed Dimension Tie, which can shoot a miniaturized black hole at the monster, sending him into oblivion. When they test fire this weapon at an abandoned school site outside Tokyo, it leaves a distortion in space-time that allows a Meganula to wander from the Carboniferous and lay an egg in the present day. The egg secretes slime for a few days in the sewers under Shibuya and multiplies into several thousand more Meganulas, while one of them hatches into the nymph stage Meganulon. Thousands of other Meganula absorb portions of Godzilla's atomic energy by swarming him to feed it to the dormant Meganulon, who then transforms into the monster known as Megagirus. Appearing in the 2000s Godzilla vs. Megagirus, she is capable of achieving Mach 4 flight, four times the speed of sound, while her high speed flapping of the wings produces ultra-high frequency waves that can destroy surrounding objects and interfere with electronic equipment. She does a lot of damage in close quarters with her enormous scissor-like claws, sharp wings and teeth, and a three-pointed barbed stinger, which absorbs Goji's atomic energy when stabbed with it. However, she's no match to the King of the Monsters, as she gets utterly annihilated when hit with two consecutive shots of the atomic breath. Thank you. 
Batra. Batra, yet another divine moth kaiju, is short for Battle Mothra and is also referred to as Black Mothra by the Shobijin, the tiny twin priestesses of Mothra. According to them, Batra was created by Earth itself 12,000 years ago after an ancient civilization created a climate-controlling device to destroy the device and restore the natural order. However, he goes beyond finishing his purpose by vowing to destroy the entire human race and needs to be stopped by Mothra, who faces him in battle that nearly destroys the ancient world and seals him in the North Sea after defeating him. He is awakened in 1993 when a meteor impacts the Earth and continues to resume his ancient crusade when he's confronted by Godzilla. Eventually, Batra and Mothra join forces in battle against Godzilla and managed to defeat him too. First appearing in Godzilla vs. Mothra in 1992, Batra possessed a much bigger body than its counterpart, both in his larva and omega stages. He could shoot orange beams from his head horn and purple beams from his red eyes and delivered a much more powerful version of this attack in his omega stage called the Prism Beam. The Dark Moth was also capable of energy conduction, where he could store electricity in his wings and blast them as shocks throughout his feet. The Mutos, Male and Female In 2014, Legendary Pictures and Toho revived the American version of Godzilla for the big screen, who was set to go against two new kaiju, a male and a female belonging to the same species dubbed as Muto, which was short for Massive Unidentified Terrestrial Organization, Monarch's designation for the kaiju. The official classification of the Mutos is Titanus Jinshin Mushi, and the original screenplay for the 2014 film mentions the name Hawk Muto and Fem Muto. However, in the film, they were referred to as Muto 1 and Muto 2 for the male and female Mutos, respectively. Mutos are said to be ancient parasitic titans driven by reproduction that kills members of the Godzilla species and lays eggs in their radioactive carcass, hence having an ancient rivalry with Godzilla. The female Muto, being larger in size, exhibits immense strength as she digs a hole through Chinatown in San Francisco to to lay eggs with her claws within a matter of seconds, whilst the male Muto is an agile flyer. Both the male and female Mutos have sharp claws that can administer serious damage to Godzilla in close combat, and additionally have the ability to harness the radiation they feed on to deliver an electromagnetic pulse and shut down all electric equipment for a considerable distance. Kamakaris. A group of scientists from the United Nations travels to the Soljal Islands to conduct experiments on the weather when they are confronted by giant praying mantises. When the group fails at their experiment, the island is hit with a massive radioactive deluge and heat wave, which mutates these mantises to an enormous size, turning them into mantis kaiju called Kamakaris. Appearing for the first time in Son of Godzilla back in 1967, this was the only major appearance for the insect monster, followed by brief roles in All Monsters Attack and Godzilla vs. Gigan. Kamakaris was revived for a scene in the film Godzilla Final Wars in the year 2004 where he was sent by the Exilians to destroy the human city of Paris. He also made a short appearance in the 2017 anime film Godzilla Planet of the Monsters as the monster who first terrorized the human race by destroying Manhattan in 1999. Rodan, Fire Rodan. The Pteranodon kaiju known widely across Godzilla fandom, Rodan first appeared in his standalone 1956 film titled Rodan, which was Toho's first kaiju film to be shot in color. After finding success, even outside the Japanese audience, he went on to appear in numerous Godzilla films, becoming one of Toho's big five, alongside Godzilla, King Ghidorah, Mothra, and Mechagodzilla. After being absent on screen for 25 
25 years, the character was revived for the Heisei era in 1993's Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla 2, in which he shared psychic abilities with his surrogate brother, Baby Godzilla. When performed through a song by a choir of psychic girls, Baby Godzilla receives a massive intake of power, while Rodan, who is injured during his battle with Godzilla, gets revived and evolves into Fire Rodan. Fire Rodan then flies to Japan to recover Baby Godzilla and fights both Godzilla and Mechagodzilla in the process. In this powered-up state, he fired a uranium heat beam from his beak, communicating telepathically with Baby Godzilla and achieving Mach 3 flight, which were his other impressive abilities. When wounded mortally in battle by Super Mechagodzilla, Fire Rodan lands on a downed Godzilla and transfers his energy to the Monster King while sacrificing himself so his surrogate brother can be raised in his place. This ability regenerates Godzilla's damaged second brain and grants him the powerful Spiral Heat Ray, which he uses against Super Mechagodzilla. Megalon Megalon is yet another insect kaiju who first appeared in 1973's Godzilla vs. Megalon, which was his only film appearance but remained a popular monster nonetheless, appearing in many Godzilla video games along with comic books and manga. The subterranean kingdom of Cetopia is damaged by underground nuclear testing when Emperor Antonio calls upon their guardian deity, Megalon, to fight the surface dwellers. He is first confronted by by the giant robot Jet Jaguar, who puts up a fight against Megalon, but his control gets hijacked by the Cetopians. Upon getting free of their control, Jet Jaguar travels to Monster Island to recruit Godzilla, prompting the Cetopians to reach out to M Space Hunter Nebula aliens and ask for Gigan's assistance to Megalon. The heroes face against the villainous monsters and manage to defeat Megalon, making the Cetopians retrieve their guardian deity back to their world and and seal all entrances to Cetopia while Gigan flees back to space. Megalon fires a yellow lightning-like beam from the horn on his head called Beast Killer Laser Beam, and also shoots geothermal napalm from his mouth. He can combine both his forelimbs to form a single drill, which allows him to burrow at Mach 3, and his wings can generate hurricane wings that go up to 1,000 meters per second. Ibira. When a terrorist organization called Red Bamboo conducts experiments on Lechi Island and dumps nuclear waste in the runoff, a crustacean organism mutates to Kaiju Heights to become Ibira. In his debut appearance in 1966's Ibira Horror of the Deep, Ibira played the sea monster that patrolled the waters around Lechi Island, which destroyed any boats that tried to enter or exit the island. The Red Bamboo used it to threaten the enslaved workers on the island in case they tried to escape. This crustacean kaiju is seen battling Godzilla twice in his first film, where he seems to hold his own against the Monster King in underwater battles, but is bested at the surface level. Abira has a larger right claw with which he grabs objects and bludgeons enemies. He also makes an appearance in Godzilla Final Wars to assist Hedorah against Godzilla, where he uses both his claws in a maneuver called the Crisis Scissors, and is also stated to have a high capacity for cellular regeneration. From his appearance in Godzilla King of the Monsters manga, Abira's abilities include wings and freezing foam, which he uses to freeze Godzilla in a matter of seconds. Marvelous Verdict As the fan following of Godzilla grew with every one of his appearances, so did the hype for the monsters he fought, because, let's face it, the hero is only as good as his villains. Godzilla may be a huge monster with an atomic breath destructive enough to turn cities to dust, but he has grown into his role as the protector of humanity by putting himself through some tough battles. He may not be shown in the best light against humanity in every single one of his appearances, but we are glad we have the King of the Monsters watching our back against the monstrosities on this list. Hope you had fun watching this video. Stay tuned for more Gujira Madness. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone.